we don't have to wait for good things to happen if the circumstances were not aligned for good things to happen you arrive and make good things happen it's a law of life become an example don't be demotivated how long you will be running do you pray when things get tough before you take a decision service today. This is a time you can please share the link with your loved ones, invite them, remind them to please join us and participate in the service. Uh, please rise up on your feet, lift up your holy hands, get ready to pray. This is a time for prayer. So let's begin by giving thanks to God and thank Him from the bottom of your heart for everything that He has blessed us with in this last year. Let's pray. Makata iti akasi ti oko pakata siti akasi ti oko tu. Makata siti akasi ti akasi ti oko tu. Makata siti akara ka pakata iti akata. Thank God for all that He has blessed you with in this past year. Makata iti akasi ti oko no ko pakata iti akasi ti oko tu. Nanya ka poko pakata iti akata siti akata. Nyoko soko pakata iti akasi ti oko no ko pakata iti akasi ti oko tu. Nanya ka poko pakata Thank you for all of the prolificity that you experienced in your personal life, in your personal growth and development with the Lord, in your spiritual growth and development, in your ministry work, in your home, in your family, relationships, body, your health, your finances, your career, in every single area of your life. Thank God for the prolificity. Thank God for the multiplication. Thank God for the blessings. Thank you to Heavenly Father. And we pray this in Jesus' almighty name. Amen. We are going to be praying for the impact of all of our soul winning activities. Romans chapter 1 verses 16 to 17 says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. We are going to be thanking God now for choosing us to bear his message of goodness, salvation, and love to this unsaved around us. Pray that as we minister the gospel, Righteousness is poured forth upon our cities and catchment areas, resulting in an avalanche of souls coming into the kingdom of God. Let's pray. Makata di tria kasi ti ongo roko pakata di tria katu ti akasi ti akapo ko pakata si ti akara ka pakata di tria kata. Thank God for all the souls that we are bringing to all of our various departments, ministries, projects, outreaches. Makata di tria kasi ti akasi ti akata si ti akata si ti ongo tu. Makata siti aka pakata iti akata siti aka siti aka tu nyanya kapo kapo pakata iti akata siti oko kapo pakata si makata siti aka raka pakata iti aka siti oko tu makata iti aka siti oko tu siti oko tu makata siti oko roko pakata iti aka siti oko na raka raka ta siti oko tu declare that as the gospel of truth is being brought to the unsaved righteousness is poured forth righteousness is poured forth. In our catchment areas, in our villages, towns, cities, states, nations, in the name of Jesus. God's righteousness, God's peace, God's salvation, God's joy, God's love, God's wisdom. Through our mega zone project, our Christmas outreach project, our Rhapsody of Realities department, he to the streams, uh, healing streams department, and to all of our different ministries, our cell ministries, to our church services, to our foundation school projects, to all of these different ministries and departments. We are winning souls from God's kingdom. We are building souls in God's kingdom. We are preserving souls in God's kingdom. Thank you, Lord. 
Siaka raka pakati vi tuyaka si tioko roko pakati si nyanyaka poko 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 pakati si tiaka si tioko tu. Thank you, dear Heavenly Father. Praise you, dear Lord God. Thank you for all the souls that we are winning, dear Heavenly Father, through all of these different departments, ministries, and projects. Thank you for choosing us and trusting us with the gospel of truth and trusting us with taking it to the ends of the world. Thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for all that you have blessed us with. Thank you for the sea of the prolific church and thank you for the miracles and the victories and the successes of the coming year in 2024. Thank you, dear Lord God. We pray this in Jesus' almighty name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for praying with us. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we worship you, we honor you. Lord, there is none like you. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. Thank you for the written word. Thank you, Father. We say, O oh Lord, our hearts and minds are open to hear and receive from you. Thank you, Father. And in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. So from today we are going to talk about so many things. Because God has given us so much. Praise the Lord. Say God has given us so much. God has given us so much. Praise the Lord. But the main thing which um, God like you know out of everything what are the main things God has given to us and this thing only God can give you know money can be given to you by men or by any, by any other thing but this one thing we are going to talk about today is so important so vital that and it can only come from God let's read John 3.16 John 3.16 He said, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Praise the Lord. And today we want to talk about this everlasting eternal life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Many don't know what God has given to them. When they are looking, oh, I want this, I want this, I want this. But what about this God has given to you? And God is wiser than us. God knows what we need. Pastor said in one of the messages, he said, From the day a child is born, all the efforts are there to stop him from dying. From the moment a child is born. A man's life is only moving in the direction from saving him from death hello are you with me uh, do you agree all the efforts all the efforts are just to save him from death and people of the world has come to know and now they are selling fear they are selling fear they're telling people oh you have what you can do to to be saved from death they are creating vaccine, they are creating medicine, not to give them life, but to save them from death. And to the extent that this man, like men I'm talking about, men, after doing everything, they know they have to die. Praise the Lord. Look at it. They have believed in the power of death so much that after best of the efforts, they say, the one who is born must die. Must die. And here, what God has given to us can, can put a full stop to all their theories that anything which is born must die because God has given to us eternal life. Praise the Lord. Everlasting life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say, I have eternal life. Say it as if you mean it. I have eternal life. You don't know what you have. Eternal life. 
and what the scripture is saying for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him should not perish praise the Lord it means no matter what happens you can take this scripture and shout on the rooftop because I believe in Jesus Christ I will not perish praise the Lord it's a law it's your protection against decay it's your protection it's a law it's not a suggestion it's not a promise in sweet by and by it's a law it's a spiritual principle that anybody who believes in Jesus will not perish should not perish praise the Lord say I, I cannot perish say I cannot perish so no matter what you are going through whatever the situation where you might have huge loan you might have anything and you think what is going to happen one thing which will not happen that you will not perish praise the Lord one thing which will not happen that you will not perish you will come out victorious praise the Lord and God is sustaining you because he wants to see your victory praise the Lord and that's the confidence you have to live your life with this is what God has given to us eternal life let me give you the definition not I but Pastor Chris gave this definition please write it you can write it and you can be pondering over it we will try to explain it means ageless without a beginning no end it is timeless it means incorruptibility indestructible imperishable not subject to failure not subject to death you can write it take out your time that's the definition Pastor Chris gave. It means ageless, without a beginning nor end. It is timeless. It means incorruptibility, indestructible, imperishable, not subject to failure not subject to death praise the Lord look at what God has given to us look at it not subject to failure not subject to death so this is what you have to know what God has given to you praise the Lord many don't know so many say oh what God has given to me I say if you only know what God has given to you you're not going to cry ever praise the Lord hallelujah so say I'm ageless I'm ageless so in Christ's embassy, it is sin to be old. Is it all right? You cannot be growing in age and getting old. Don't say, I'm getting older now. No, no, no. You're just growing in age. You cannot get old. Praise the Lord. Well, the life in you is ageless. Ageless. So that number should not show on your body. Praise the Lord. So many people say, age is just a number. I say, very well said, but please start living by it. You can make that statement, but for you to prove that statement, have to have eternal life. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Otherwise, you can just make that statement and you might be getting older. Somebody, age is just a number. Be Christian who understand this can say, age is just a number. Praise the Lord. And number should not show us, show on us. So means ageless. Don't say, oh, at 40, my knees, my eyes, uh, my head, and blah, 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 blah. No, no, no. It means you don't understand what God has given to you. It's ageless. This definition is so profound, so deep, and so comprehensive. Nothing missing, nothing broken. Say, I'm ageless. Without a beginning, no end. It means you have come into a life and it's never going to end. Praise the Lord. You're never going to die. You will never die. Say, I will never die. Say, I will never die. It is timeless. What? Time. Praise the Lord. It means incorruptibility, indestructible, imperishable. Oh, Lord. What man can want? Why man wants money? Because they don't want to be destroyed. They don't want to perish. That's their drive for money. They don't want their children to suffer and that's why they do all kind of evil just to get money because they think money is the only only sustenance they know praise the lord hallelujah and look at it what they have much more than they have they have debt and now they are calling themselves rich he said what kind of um, deceit is that self-deceit isn't it it's a self-deceit 
they are fooling themselves praise the lord so say i'm ageless i have no end hello please say it the way you mean it he said i don't have any end i'm not going to end i'm not going to finish <laughs> because when somebody says i will finish you he said you can't finish me i'm i'm finished less you know i'm finished proof i cannot be finished so when devil tells you i will finish you he said devil you can't finish me you can't finish me you will be finished but i will live forever praise the lord not subject to failure not subject to death and god wants us to have this mentality to grow in these things to use it to put it to work hallelujah so let's go to john 3:16 john 3:16 for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life now the question is what you have to believe to have ever everlasting life answer me what you have to believe who you have to believe everybody is giving me answer okay what you have to believe i'm asked to answer what you have to believe believe lord jesus okay give me more detail answer okay beautiful that's what you have to believe let's go to romans chapter 10 verse 9 so many people say i believe in god i said what do you believe in god <laughs> you can't just say i believe in god and everybody can say i believe in god that will not make him have eternal life so what you have to believe He said that if thou shall confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, it means you have to confess the lordship of Jesus Christ over your life. If you don't confess the lordship of Lord Jesus, you are not going to have eternal life. Look at it. And shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shall be saved. So you have to believe in your heart that oh, Jesus died, you died, he was buried, you were buried. He rose back. You rose back. You understand? Then you have to confess the lordship of Jesus Christ. If you don't do that, you cannot have eternal life. Praise the Lord. So it's very important. Many don't ask that question. Do I believe in the lordship of Jesus Christ? Then the question comes: How do you know that you have believed in the lordship of Jesus Christ? Did you get my question? How do you know? that jesus is your lord okay okay let me define my question what is an act which can define that you have believed in the lordship of jesus christ okay act i'm not saying act i'm saying act act now what has to be done that's what my question is what you will be doing that person who is looking at you can say this man believes in lord jesus christ what is that thing <laughs> that's the thing so if somebody is not winning soul he cannot prove that he has believed in the lordship of jesus christ that's the point i'm trying to drive so you cannot take your soul winning lightly because that's the only act which proves The Lord Jesus is your Lord. Hallelujah. Many people don't know that. They say, "Oh, Jesus is my Lord." He say, "Okay, for well, how long he is your Lord?" You know, Jesus is my Lord when I want him to be my Lord, and when I don't want him to be Lord, I do what I want to do. I say, "Is that the way Lordship works?" Praise the Lord. And that's the reason sometimes people don't see the results they want because they want to do what they want to do. He say, "I don't want." This is the challenge. If you say Jesus is your Lord, how can you not do what He wants you to do? You can't be living your life the way you want to live. Otherwise, it would just be a mere statement. Lord Jesus is my Lord. It's like you know, a man comes, one girl on left, one girl on right, and he say, "This one is my wife." Third one, he say, "Ah, uh -uh, this one on your right, this one is left," and you're calling the other one your wife. Will you believe it? So somebody say, "Oh, Jesus is my Lord, but I do what I want to do." What kind of statement is that? 
you are doing what you want to do and then you call Jesus your Lord you must be joking and no wonder they don't show the eternal life in their life they are sick they are getting old they have fears in them people live with so many fears I say, if you believe in Lord Jesus Christ, how come you have fears in your life? I don't have any fear in my life. I don't have. Even in my dreams, I will be chasing the devil. I don't even have to chase devil. And I come into a place, devils are so threatened, I'm telling you. They are attention, they are at attention, they, they don't know what I'm going to say. I don't have to deal with them, they are already dealt with, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Because I show from my life the Lord Jesus is my Lord. I do what He tells me to do. So don't, because that's, that's why many have questions. Oh, Pastor, I come to church. I come to church, but I am sick. Because the question you should be asking do you really believe in the Lordship of Jesus Christ? Do you really live your life? As if Lord Jesus is your Lord. What is your life like? No pastor, I do what I want to do. Do you ever ask him what he should be doing? Does it matter to you that you didn't ask him? You woke up, you just start getting ready and you're saying, I'm going to job. Okay, okay, now. You will give me a realistic answer, am I right? I'm going to ask you a question. Okay, so... Give me a realistic answer. Don't give me hypothetical. Try to please me because I know the answer. Okay. Now, okay. And Sister Chitra works in a government office, isn't it? Okay. Now, suppose 3 a.m. in the morning, her wedding is taking place, and in her office, Prime Minister of the country is coming. And they say, you have to come. What she will do? Office. Okay, let me make it more tougher. 3 a.m. Her child is sick. 2 a.m. Prime Minister is coming. And they say, if you don't come, we will send you to jail. We will cut your head. You will seize all your money. Then, what she will do? She will still go to office. Because that means lordship. How many times you think, I have to do what God has called me to do? Your boss becomes your lord. But what about Lord Jesus? No, my family says, I must do. Pastor, what should I do? He said, you should know by yourself who is your lord. Why are you asking me? One of my leader came to me this morning. She said, Pastor, I've got a job and I have to rush. Please allow me. I said, I can't allow you. He said, Pastor, but uh, you should allow me. I said, why? How can you force me to allow you? Since I cannot force you to stop, you can't force me to allow you. But I have to go. I said, do what you want to do, but I will never allow you. Don't make me a partaker of your sin. I didn't allow her. She went. It's okay with me. But at least I'm not a partaker of her sin. She proved that who is the Lord of her life. She proved it. Then tomorrow when she will have sickness and she want to quote that scripture, I don't know how it will play out. Because she proved it. What was more important to her? Job. So many times people don't see the manifestation of the word of God in their life because in truth they don't believe. If they would have believed, it would have shown in their life. They would have been so pressurized. How can I not do what God has asked me to do? And they would have sacrificed everything just to please God. Praise the Lord. Because the most important thing in life is to please God. And we should be concerned about pleasing God. And one can know whether he's pleasing God or not pleasing God. Praise the Lord. 
Nobody can say, oh, I don't know the will of God and that's why I don't know whether I'm pleasing Him or not. Then God will be amiss. If we don't know God's will, then how are we are going to live out His will? If we have to live out His will, we must know His will. Then only we can be hold responsible that we did or didn't what He wanted. If His will is not explicitly told to us, how are we are going to know whether we are pleasing Him or not? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Are you with me? Is important. But these are the times you cannot be in between. Everything is spiritual. Everything is spiritual. Life has become... I shouldn't be you saying this thing, but I have to say it. Life is spiritual and life has become highly spiritual. I don't know whether you understand because they look contradictory statements. Life is already spiritual. But now looking at our world, it is really spiritual. Praise the Lord. You cannot be on the in-between. You have to be on one side. And better choose the side of God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You cannot be in-between. You can't be pleasing world and you can't be pleasing God. It's not possible. Bible says, no man can please two masters. Am I right? No man can serve two masters. No man can please two masters. He will please one and he will deceive the other. So now it is the time. It is the time. You put it to work. You take out those fears. That oh if you don't do what man wants you to do. Something bad is going to happen. No you will not perish. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Are you with me? So tell your neighbor be a witness. Be a witness. Praise the Lord. He say, I have eternal life. I cannot perish. I have eternal life. I cannot perish. Just speak in tongues. Thank God. You have eternal life. You cannot perish. You have eternal life. You cannot perish. You have eternal life. You cannot perish. You have eternal life, 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 you cannot perish. In the name of Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you, Father. My name is Gantuga. I am from Mongolia. I am 33 years old. My health was very bad before the healing streams. I was diagnosed with virtual hepatitis. In 2012, after that diagnosis, in a short time, cirrhosis of the liver, stage 4 liver disease, was diagnosed. Due to cirrhosis of the liver, all sorts of diseases spread to my eternal organs. My spleen became enlarged, the vessels of the Esophagus became dilated, the pancreas was inflamed, the gallbladder was thick and swollen. There were cardiac uh, complications due to poor blood supply and my body was very weak. I immediately agreed to register for the on-screen prayer. When I saw myself on the screen, I was very excited. When Pastor Chris prayed for me and said, Gantuga from Mongolia is healed and you are, you are healed, I felt indescribable joy. I was discharged from the hospital shortly before prayer. I couldn't even get out of bed. But now I can work like any normal person. Nothing is impossible with God. I am very grateful to Pastor Chris. Thank you for paving the way and healing many people. If you are watching us for the first time and you are yet to give your life to Christ, just say this prayer after me because Jesus is the embodiment of all wisdom. Praise the Lord. So once you have Jesus, you'll also have wisdom. So say these words after me. Mean it from your heart. Say, Dear Lord God, I believe in Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. I believe He died on the cross to save my soul and you raised Him from dead on the third day and is alive forevermore. Today I confess the Lordship of Jesus Christ over my life and I say that Lord Jesus is my Lord and my Savior from this day forward. I'm born again. 
I'm a child of God and I'm safe. And I'm wise. I have the life of God in my spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. If you just did that prayer our details on the screen, please do let us know. That's wisdom again. You know, these are the acts of wisdom. And uh, you cannot take them for granted. Because wisdom of God will always take you to the right direction. That's how you know where wisdom is taking you. Wisdom of God will tell you what God wants you to do. Again, because it is the wisdom of God. Wisdom of God cannot take you away from God. That's how you know who is guiding you. There are several ways you can know who is who is guiding you. Praise the Lord. So, please let us know that you just gave your life to Christ so that we can pray for you, guide you, nurture you till you become a beautiful, ardent follower of Lord Jesus Christ. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for them who have just given life to Christ. I bless them with the wisdom with your grace I name the name of Jesus upon them forever and devil has no claim over their life whatsoever in the name of Jesus yes father I bless them with your love with grace with your wisdom and with your spirit be blessed in Jesus name amen this is the time to give our tithes our offerings Father, in the name of Jesus, we say thank you for giving us the wisdom, grace and the honor to honor you with our substance. We have done it according to your word in faith and as we have done it, we receive the multiplied harvest according to your word. Yes, Father, we invoke the power of blessing and the law of multiplication on these offerings for the furtherance of the gospel. And in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's stand up on our feet. Thank God for His mercies, for His grace. Let's thank Him. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, be with us now and forevermore. In Jesus' name. Amen. Surely His goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. In Jesus' name, Amen. Cheer up. The word works. And our yearly... Evidence of disappearance of billions around the world with no trace. A staggering number of plane crashes and automobile accidents reported in multiple cities as pilots and drivers mysteriously disappear. Breaking news streets almost empty as the world battles with sudden disappearances of millions. It's uncertain what exactly happened. What we do know is that millions have been reported missing across the world. Soldiers continue to search for missing people as the government urges citizens to remain calm.
To learn more about how to prepare for the rapture of the Church of Jesus Christ, please click on the link below. Subscribe to our channel, hit the bell icon, like, comment and share. Thank you and God bless you.